Welcome back. Someone last week wrote, why are you wearing a sweater? Are you some kind of hippie? I'd love to see a hippie afford one of my sweaters. <laughs> I don't I think so. Uh, Disney World reopened and we made a joke saying it smelled like wet Goofy. Some of you think Goofy, we've gone through this before, some of you think Goofy is a cow, not a dog. A solution offered by one of you was to say wet Pluto. If you think it's more fun to say wet Pluto than wet Goofy, be my guest. Me, I want the jokes to land. <laughs> Guys, I've been saying House of Dragon. It's House of the Dragon. I am finally caught up. I will agree, I think it's getting really good. I will admit for the first few episodes, I was calling it House of Dragging. <laughs> Sometimes the dialogue is a little on the nose. Like last week when Damon said, I can't have sex with you, I'm your uncle. And Renera said, no, no, I incest. <laughs> I just don't think people talked like that back then. <laughs> hey, we implied that Sherlock Holmes was addicted to opium. He was addicted to uh, cocaine, which was covered in my favorite of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's book, Sherlock Holmes and the 400-page screenplay. <laughs> it's an unshootable script, Holmes. But you know what? He may have done cocaine. He got the job done. He solved the cases. That's why it's fine. He's oh, he's a okay with me, buddy. Sherlock is to me what Herschel Walker is to the GOP. I don't care. We uh, showed a little league baseball card of Mark Zuckerberg uh, from 1974. He was not alive till then. It wasn't until 1984 that he was pulled from his milk bath. <laughs> I was told that peanuts, cashews, and almonds are not nuts. They are legumes, seeds. Some even said they're droops, whatever droops are. And let me just tell you, if peanuts, cashews, and almonds are not nuts, there's no such <laughs> thing as a nut, OK? If the best three nuts aren't nuts, I'm out on nuts. If they're out, I'm out. Uh, hey, we did a, th we were, uh, Donald Trump said um, Democrats cheat like dogs, and we were surprised because who thinks dogs cheat? And quite a few of you said that maybe he thought that because of this famous <laughs> photo where that dog is obviously So I guess I want to apologize to Donald Trump. He obviously thinks that dogs cheat because he saw this painting and thought it was a photo. Um, oh, we were talking about uh, arguing that Fred from Scooby-Doo uh, was a straight uh, white man. We said he definitely was because he was a white guy uh, with a van. Um, one of the jackals said that it was Daphne's van. I dug into it online. Everybody seems to agree that it's uh, Fred's van. Um, we could always just agree to disagree as long as we agree that this van right here definitely belongs to this guy. <laughs> Hashtag not an ad. Um, Oh, we talked about Six Million Dollar Man, and we joked, I joked and came up with what its title would have been in France. It turned out Six Million Dollar Man uh, was on in France, and it was uh, L'Homme qui valait trois milliards. You think I'm joking? I'm not joking. Alex, roll the clip. Carnage numéro one. Roger. Contact BDSI. Okay, contact Soupap Cop Motor 7. Fermez les gaz. So you're wondering why is it, so a Tuamiad is a three billion. So the six million dollar man in France was the, was the three billion franc man. <laughs> and if you're wondering, was three uh, billion francs equal to six uh, 
million dollars at the time, it wasn't. That was worth upwards of $70 million, which means that the French, I guess, the French producers who put it on TV were like, well, you could not build a robot man for six million? <laughs> no, no one will believe it. Because <laughs> they're just because of unions over there. <laughs> the problem with the show, it didn't work because um, it was, the title was tied to the exchange rate. So, <laughs> so like one week, you know, it'd be qui valait trois milliards, and then the next week it would be uh, deux point cinq milliards, trois point un. And people were like, is it the same show? Am I? It didn't work. Um, we uh, made a joke about there being a police tape on um, a bathroom door, and uh, graphics did me dirty. Um, that's, first of all, it's a stall door, not a bathroom door. And also, um, so the way police tape works is it's supposed to make it harder to get into something. <laughs> Whereas this, you would just open the door like any other time. And so, of course, I went down to their weird little cave, and I was like, hey, graphics. And they were like, what? And I was like, do you not realize that if it was like this, you could just open the door to someone's bathroom stall? And they said, maybe that's what we want you to do. <laughs> We discussed the uproar about uh, Black Hobbits in the new Lord of the Rings fan, and a fan very passionately wrote me and said, you know, this wasn't even a story. People were not upset about Black Hobbits. This was created by the press to draw attention to the show, and I thought, you know what, that does make sense. Sometimes articles, you know, they basically pick one or two tweets from people with no followers, and they try to create an uproar out of that. And so I, you know, in my head, I was feeling apologetic toward the fact that we even drew attention to it. And then this very same person read on and continued, we're not upset about that, we're upset about the black elves. And I was just like, F off, what am I even doing? <laughs> um, we asked our international viewers to send in postcards. Uh, we'll put our address here once again. Or not, I don't know. <laughs> And we, you know, so we have a P.O. box, and we're going to take all the postcards from the International Jackal Jackals, and we'll do a drawing. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my sweater money and pay to ship you. <laughs> and uh, so we didn't think in a week that we'd get international postcards, which, of course, we didn't. We got some real jerks from the States who already are sending them. <laughs> and um, first of all, I said, you have to write, in order to enter, you have to write, uh, I am a jackal, and I don't uh, deserve your kindness. And then uh, this man... Uh, or woman, just wrote, uh, Seth is a jackass, and then gave their name as Bobby Corrections, which I don't think. <laughs> or maybe that's me. Maybe they think I'm Bobby. It's, uh, they sent it to me. Anyway, but I did like that the, uh, it's a correctional facility. <laughs> uh, Finland is not Scandinavian. Um, Based on how snooty the Danes, Swedes, and Norwegians were about the error, I'd say, uh, I think that's for the best, Finland. <laughs> um, oh, so uh, I mentioned last week as well, my beloved Steelers played the Jets last weekend in Pittsburgh, and I mentioned that one of our crew members, Kenny Coyle, proposed a bet uh, leading up to that week where he said that if the Jets won, I would have to mention it on air, and if the Steelers won, he would wear a Steelers half shirt to work, like a crop top jersey, I guess. And we talked at the time, we were a little surprised because that did not seem like a very equitable uh, bet. It seemed like Kenny did not mind about that part of it, that maybe, <laughs> maybe Kenny was angling for one of the outcomes there. Um, anyway, uh, but then the Jets win, and uh, I come in on Monday morning, and Kenny is all smiles, and he's wearing a, a Jets crop top. So it turns out the crop top was not a punishment at all. Um, uh, wore it Monday, wore it Tuesday, wore it Wednesday. And finally today I had to say, Kenny, you got to stop wearing a crop top uh, to work. And he was like, why? And I was like, well, it could be an HR issue. And then Kenny very confidently said, uh, HR, it does, HR can't touch it if it's a bet. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes. If, he goes, if it's a bet, it's outside of their purview. <laughs> um, I did, uh, uh, 
after the game to show I was a good sport about the fact uh, that the Jets uh, beat the Steelers. I took a photo uh, with former Jet wide receiver, Santonio Holmes. There he is, and there's the uh, Super Bowl ring he won when he was with the Jets. <laughs> was that? It's not? How are you so sure? Oh, because he wasn't alive in 1969? Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I'm, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to be a good sport. I didn't know. It's not my fault. It's been that long. Um, I also said that the Jets being two and two was like their Super Bowl and that uh, it was really hard getting to work because uh, Fifth Avenue was all backed up from the parade. And somebody wrote, ticker tape parades are historically done in Lower Broadway between Battery Park and City Hall. They do not happen on Fifth Avenue. What makes you think that if the Jets had one, they wouldn't it up? Wouldn't be like a weird float halfway on a Staten Island fair. They're like, what the f up? <laughs> uh, we had a very uh, a sport uh, sport themed week um, because we also, you know, obviously we're very invested in the New York Mets on this show because um, the entire staff is Mets fan, excluding Wally. Uh, cue card Wally is a Yankees fan. Um, but mostly we're Mets fans, and uh, there was a closer look where we made fun of the fact that the Mets, despite winning 101 games, did not win their division and now have a, a tough path to the World Series. And uh, so I get, in the, I get in the elevator with, with uh, you know, uh, Jim and John, the security guys, Mets fans, and uh, they were like, what's with all the Mets burns? And I was like, uh, hey, Sal wrote it. You know, Sal put the Mets burns in. He's a self-hating Mets fan. He did it all. And then uh, one of them said, I was worried that uh, Wally would change the cards to make all the jokes about how Aaron Judge hit 62 home runs. And then uh, the other security guard said, uh, if Wally changed the cards, he would have made it about Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Jim and John, the Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> and they both just went like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, hey, you know, we don't ever have a, we don't ever let audience members in uh, to the studio for corrections. We have a very special one. I mentioned him on the show tonight. Uh, Matt Parker is here. Uh, uh, Matt Parker was, uh, sent me the first YouTube video when I was doing the Attic shows, uh, basically uh, commenting on how I could improve things like the lighting and the, and the sound. In a way, uh, Matt is uh, the original jackal. And in a way, he's responsible for this uh, uh, death spiral I've been in ever since. Uh, but he, he was a really important part of the show uh, during the pandemic, so I'm really happy he's here. Thanks for being here, Matt. Is Matt there? Where is he? There is Matt. Thank you for being here. And uh, that, I think, is all we have, you guys. Why don't you see me uh, next week? <laughs>